Hello, this is Cameron McKenzie, application engineer here at Man and Machine, and today we're going to be looking at sending assemblies and I assemblies from Inventor 2023 into Fusion 360. First of all, if you don't already have an I assembly configured, uh, you'll need to obviously assemble that or create one rather inside of Inventor. So to do this, we can just go over to the Manage tab. Select in the author panel, create I assembly, and we can essentially just come in and add the configurations that we want inside of our I assembly. So in this particular one, um, I'm going to have a few configurations just turning um, certain stumps on and off um, and including their bales. So I can come in here um, and just select each of the individual components and I can toggle them on and off from inside of my assembly author. Um, so for instance, if I go and expand stump one, you can see I've got the ability to come in and include or exclude it. Just by double clicking on it, it'll add this in as a parameter. So I'll be able to make adjustments to it later on. So if I select stump two and stump three for include or exclude, I've also got the ability to adjust its grounding status and whether it's adaptive or not. Um, and then I can also do the same since I'm going to be adjusting the stumps. I want to be able to turn the bales off as well. So I'm going to include or exclude those from there um, inside of bale one and bale two. So you can see all four of those options are now listed down here at the bottom as well in our table. So we'll be able to come in and make um, additional rows in here and adjust each of the individual settings for for each of those from inside there. So I want to see if there's anything inside of the parameters that I want to make any adjustments to. I don't think so. Properties. No, no, no. That's fine. Perfect. Um, so essentially all we need to do now is quickly add a few rows to add the different configurations that we want. So I'm just going to right click on row one, select insert row, make the adjustment that I require. So I'm going to turn stump one off as well as stump two or sorry, stump two and three off as well as bales one and two. And that's going to be my first configuration after the original. And I'm going to come in and add my third configuration in and just include stump two as well as I think it's bale two. There we go. Include. So once I've got those there, um, that'll essentially turn each of those off and we can then just verify that that's fine using the verify button and hit OK to confirm. And that should now go off and create a table for us um, with the various configurations. And as simple as that, we've now got an I assembly inside of our assembly. Um, so we've got this table that now appears inside of our model browser. I can expand this out and you can see we've got the three different configurations that we've predetermined in there, each with their corresponding name. So I've got wickets one. If I double click on here, I get wickets two. Might take a few seconds to load the first time around and wickets three. And you can see each of the items. Yeah, it's fine. It's just a relationships issue on that particular one. So I'm just going to accept that very quickly. Probably need to fix that um, if we wanted this as a, as a permanent solution. But you can see it's quite quickly and quite easily created that and configured that. So we've got the ability to come in and suppress individual items or include or exclude them um, using these different um, I assembly configurations. So as simple as that, we've got the ability to do that. If we ever wanted to edit the table, I'm sure you most of you are aware, but if you if this is your first time looking at I assemblies, we can right click and select edit table um, or edit via spreadsheet. So we've got the ability to edit that as well. And that's actually what you came here for. Uh, we've got the ability now to push each of those instances or each of those variations through to Fusion 360 as well. So inside of Inventor Professional 2023 or Inventor 2023, we've now got a Fusion 360 tab available to us. Inside of that Fusion 360 tab, we've got the ability to send our model into each of the different um, environments that or workspaces that um, Fusion 360 has available to it. So we've got generative design, we've got simulation environments, we've got manufacturing environments, and we've also got the generic design environment. So in the final tab, I'm just going to select Fusion 360, and this is essentially replacing the send to Fusion button that we had in the previous um, inventor. So if I select um, modeling, this will essentially send my file 
into the Fusion 360 modeling environment. Um, it then pops up with this Send to Fusion or Fusion 360 Interoperability tab. We can decide whether we show this each time or not. I'm just going to hit Continue on here. And once it's done that, it's now going to compile everything for me um, and give me a few options for uploading this information into Fusion 360. So in the first section, I've got the design scope. Essentially, what this allows me to do is choose which parts and files we send across. So at the moment, it's picking up all visible parts, which is correct. With my current configuration of Wickets 3, I want to have only the visible parts selected. Otherwise, I can come in and actually choose the individual parts that I want to include. In this case, all visible parts is correct, and I'm happy with that. The next section down, if I collapse this very quickly, you can see is Fusion 360 or Fusion Team location. I can come into this drop down, choose the team that I want to assign this to. Inside of each of those teams, I've then got all of the individual projects. And inside of each of those projects, I've got the different folders. So I can come in and choose a team, then choose a project, and then choose a folder for this. For this one, I just want to go into extensions and I'll probably just pop it straight at the top level of extensions over there. And you can see my selected location that appears down at the bottom. The last thing I want to do is just assign a file name to it. This one's current coming up as wickets. I want to just distinguish this in case I want to bring any of the other um, configurations through. So I'm going to give it the same name as the current iAssembly version. So I'm going to go wickets-03. Notice this now saves this as an IPT file format. Essentially what it's going to be doing is it's going to be taking all of the individual parts that are inside of my assembly and then rather than promoting it, it's going to demote them into um, the individual components. So it's going to take part files and make them into components and then those components will then be made inside of a a generic part file. Um, so it's taking the assembly, making it into a part file, and all of the sub-assemblies or, or parts that were inside of the assembly, it's then take, making um, components or bodies basically out of them. Once we're happy with that, we can just hit upload down at the bottom. We could check launch Fusion 360 when upload complete if we wanted to. I already have Fusion 360 open um, in the background, so I'm just gonna hit upload. It's going to want me to save the data, which I'm happy with, so hit OK on there. It's going to then run through the upload process, and you can see it's now finished, it's completed. We could view details on web, but I'm just going to open up Fusion 360 directly from here. And already it's telling me that I can refresh that the data in this folder has been updated. So I can refresh this window very quickly, and Wickets 3 has already appeared inside here. You can see how quick it is to get that there. And we're now working with an IPT file. One thing to note with it being an IPT file format, if I just double click on here very quickly, it's going to open this as a part file. What that will then need us to do is inside of Fusion, we're going to need to give this a save very quickly once we've opened this part up. Um, and that will save it then as the F3D file format, so the Fusion 360 file format, which is native, obviously, to Fusion. Um, but yeah, essentially, that's the process. It's, it's a case of selecting the version of the iAssembly that you want, going into the Fusion 360 tab, selecting Send to Modeling Environment, choose the parts that we want to include in the send, and then pretty much uploading it to the correct folder. Once it's open, we've got this over here. We can then just hit a save. Currently, you'll notice it is untitled. So it, we would need to save it as whatever name we want to call it. And then it will be saved inside of Fusion 360. Awesome. So that's essentially the process that, that's required. If you have any further questions, please feel free to get in contact with us. Otherwise, thank you very much for your time. Have a great day further.